Oh my goodness, it's Wendy Elaine Wright, the Hollywood Talent Manager, and I'm going to talk to you about how to go from extra work to speaking roles in television and film. So a lot of times actors start their careers doing extra work, and there's nothing wrong with that. You definitely want to do extra work. What does that mean? You go on set, you don't have any lines, you're usually considered like background. You're part of the furniture. You're, you're creating the atmosphere. So let's say the main characters are going to go eat in a restaurant. You are at other tables, and you don't have any dialogue, and you sit at those tables, and you are just pretending to have conversations with the other person. That's it, right? They might have you walking back and forth. It's called crossing. You're at a hospital and there's two doctors are talking and there are people crossing, patients crossing, nurses crossing, and you don't have any lines, but you're just crossing in different scenes. It puts you on set to watch how things are really done. What directors do, what writers do, the producers, the AD, the first AD, the second AD, the lighting, the gaffers, the sound, all the people working on set, like ants, busy. They've got this massive production that they need to get done. They have this much time to shoot it, and it's going to cost this much time, this much money every second they're over. So they're always like on budget, on time. I got to get this done. You stay out of the way, and you're in the background. What happens is you show up on set. They put you in the background holding area. Could be a tent, could be a part of a building, a room, a stadium, or wherever. And they have you sit over there and stay out of the way. They check everybody in, and that's those are they now they're gonna figure out where they want you and what scenes. And when they call you, you go do whatever they say. Cross over here, walk over there, sit down over there, you do those things, then they send you back to holding. You're going to learn a lot. Just keep your eyes open and say hi to the people, the extras, and be friendly to all the, the people that work on the film. Just smile and be friendly. Don't get in anybody's way and be right where you're supposed to be. Wherever they tell you to go, go sit there. Don't wander off, right? Also, when you're an extra, don't bother the cast. They're, they have a lot of pressure. They have a lot of work to do. They have to shoot their scenes and get different takes and different angles and different close-ups and you know, establishing shots. They don't have time to discuss things with you. They're not there to meet you. You're not there to meet them. You're there to learn how movies and TV are made. Now, if an extra comes over to you, I mean an eight, oh, a star comes over to you and says hello, of course say hello and be polite. But don't go track down the stars and try to get pictures or say hello to them because they'll send you home. Okay, now, once you've done that and you get, it's exciting, you get paid like $125, you get that check three weeks later, you do not put that on your resume because extra work never goes on a resume. Only speaking roles or if it's a movie where you have a silent, you're, you play someone deaf and you're the lead of the movie, you never speak, but you're, you're, you're a principal role, that goes on your resume. But extra work, Background work does not go on a resume, but do it. Now, let's say you've done it for a year and you've learned a lot. You've met a lot of people, you've learned a lot, you've worked on a lot of different sets and shows and commercials as an extra, movies as an extra, a little bit of TV as an extra. Now you want to start getting speaking roles. Great! Well, the casting directors that cast extras are completely different than the casting that casting directors that cast the actors with lines. Okay, they're completely different companies. Extras casting companies cast extras. It's all they do. They don't cast the roles that speak. You have to go to a completely different set of casting directors for that. Okay, so when you want to start auditioning for roles where you speak, you're going to have to have some acting ability. You can't just walk across and sit down and pretend you're talking, pretend you're dancing in a club, and you know, like pretend you're like excited at a at a rock concert. No, now you're going to have to get a script, and the script they're going to give you a s lines and s a story and a character with feelings and emotions that are not yours, <laughs> and you have to learn how to act in order to do those speaking roles. So you can't just show up like an extra worker. An extra, they'll take anybody. They'll take an old person out of a nursing home and throw them in a restaurant. You don't have to have any acting experience whatsoever. It's a fun day, maybe you get paid $150. There are some people that do extra work for a living. They're SAG, after, they're SAG union actors. 
They work every day of the week on extra pro as on extras on television, film commercials. They make $150 a day. That's how they pay their bills. Nothing wrong with that. That's fun. They get a free meal. They get to hang out on set. They get watching great actors work. They they're with their friends. They get to read their book, play their jigsaw puzzles, whatever. Study for a class. Maybe they're going to school online. They're getting a degree. Who knows what they're doing? Writing a screenplay. That works. But if you want to do speaking roles, you have to learn to act. Okay. Does sometimes an extra get thrown a line? Yeah, of course. Sometimes you're an extra and the director says, you know, let's have them say, uh, say something. If you're saying something in a crowd like, go Frank, go Frank, and they give everybody that line, that's not considered a line. That's atmosphere cheering on somebody. That's not the same as a line, okay? But sometimes they do give you a line. They think that something needs to be said. Some scripted dialogue needs to be said in this situation, a line or two or three, and they pick someone and give you that line. Well, if that happens, they have to give you a new contract right then and there on set, and you have to sign that contract that they just bumped you up to, uh, to have lines. So if they don't give you that contract, they're going to bill it as extra work. So you ask for the contract, and they have to give that to you. Okay. Now let's say now you want to do speaking speaking roles. Okay, you've got to go to acting class. Okay, you've got to go to acting class, my darlings. You've got to learn how to act because what if tomorrow you have an audition and they give you 10 pages of sides, 10 pages from the script? Do you even know what to do with that? Of course not. Of course you don't know. Nobody knows until you've had training, right? So you go to class. They start small. They give you one or two pages of dialogue, and you, you work on that. Now, acting is far more than memorizing. Memorizing is not acting. Memorizing is not feeling emotions. When you go to watch a movie and somebody is devastated that they lost their child or their husband broke up or their building caught on fire or their friend was in an accident, they're devastated. That's not memorization. Those are feelings. And actors that you're watching on TV know how to conjure up those feelings. They know how to turn on those feelings, and then turn them off. Turn them on, turn them off. The director says, action, turn them on. Cut, turn them off. Do it again, on, off, on, off. A little bit more, on, higher, higher, a little less, lower, lower, off, cut. An actor is good at turning their feelings on and off. Which feelings? Happy, sad, angry, sarcastic, depressed, joyful, sexy, arrogant. They can turn all their feelings on, like the oven. Which, which dial do I want? I want to be a sexy, a little casual, a little like zay. Da, da, da. They, an actor can negotiate their emotions, navigate their emotions like that. It's not memorization. So when you get a script, you, you memorize it. Okay, I'm ready. No, you're not. All you did was remember the words. That's like this part of it. <laughs> this part of it is now you've got to find the emotions inside yourself. You've got to find the emotions and be able to turn them on and turn them off. And not just by yourself with a whole bunch of people watching. And not just once, but over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. When they say action, they might shoot that 20 times. You don't have the skill to do that until you train and learn how to do that. You don't have the skill to do that because you walked around as an extra. You don't have that skill. Okay. Let's say you are in an acting class. You're going to learn how to memorize things. Yes. How do you memorize it? You don't just take the script and learn the words. Oh, memory. That's the hardest way to learn a script. First, you read it 10 times. Read the script. Read the script. Top to bottom. Every page. Then you start to learn what is this about? Who is this character? What does the character feel? Why are they talking? What do they want from the other character? How, how are they feeling about what the other character says? What's their opinion of what the other person said? Blah, 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 blah. Now we memorize it. It's easier to memorize once you have all that information in there. Okay, I'm not going to go into any more about acting. Um, take classes. So some of you, one of the questions someone said is, I, I'm trying to find classes. What if there are no classes near me? Online classes are fantastic. Online classes, kids. 
Why are online classes great? Because for the first time in, in history, you don't have to live in Los Angeles to train with Margie Haber, Howard Fine, Larry Moss, uh, Ivana Chubbick, Anthony Mondell, Joseph Perlman. You don't have to live in New York to train with New York teachers. James Ciccone, William Esper Studios, Anthony Mondell also teaches in New York. You don't have to live in Atlanta to train with Drama Inc. and Alex Collins and the Alliance Theater. You don't have to live in any of these places to train with people now. You can do it online on Zoom. Woohoo! This is awesome! Now, for those of you who still want in person classes, add another class. Add an in person class. You can do both. I will tell you this. There are different methods of acting training. So if you want to go from extra work to speaking roles, you need to learn the craft, the craft of acting. I know you hear all the famous actors, well, I'm very focused on the craft. You have to be. The craft is the technique that you use to bring up your emotions on, a, on the dime. When someone says action, you got control over your, your emotions. You have to. So you have to learn some sort of technique that allows you to master that. Some people use the method just Stanislavski method. Some people use Meisner, Sanford Meisner technique. These are two different techniques. They're different, very different from each other. You can study both, but study them one at a time. Don't study both of those at the same time, ever. Because they conflict with each other, they have different philosophies, uh, it'll confuse you. Pick one and master that. Become extremely good at Meisner. Study it for two years, three years, become very good at Meisner. Then switch to method. And start studying the method and become very, very good at method acting. Now, you have two techniques you can use. And some scenes you'll use this technique, and in other scenes you'll use this technique. But at least you have two different techniques you can work with. Some actors only have one technique, and that's enough to have a career. They're Meisner actors, and that's all they do, and they're great. And some are method actors, and that's all they do, and they're great. And then some actors can do both. And then some actors throw in some other techniques, the Chubbuck technique, the Chubbuck method, blah, 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 whatever. Okay? But you have to have a technique. If you don't have a technique, you will not have any control over your emotions. You won't be able to do it when you're nervous. You won't be able to do it when you're on set and now you're in front of a star. Let's say you get cast, you have seven lines, you're with Tom Cruise. If you don't have a technique, your nerves are going to freak you out and you're going to freeze up and you're not going to be able to speak and say your lines. You need a technique to fall back on when you're nervous, when you're scared, when you're upset. If you Any kind of thing, you need a technique. If they rewrite those lines while you're on set and give you a whole new script, you've got half an hour, go work on it. You need a technique. So you want to be an actor to go from extra work to speaking roles, you got to get an acting technique. If you want to work one-on-one -on -one with an acting coach, one-on-one, -on -one, I will highly recommend Rod Roland. Rod Roland. Like rowing a boat to the land. Roland. You can find him at rodrolandcoaching.com. He is by far one of the greatest one-on-one -on -one acting coaches on the planet. And if you really want intensive training, just you and a, and he's also a working actor that's been working for 30 years. He is a drop-dead gorgeous man who has worked as a series regular multiple times. He has been on a hundred television shows and films and movies and he's an exceptionally good actor but he's also an exceptionally good teacher so you definitely want if you want one-on-one -on -one, he's your guy if you're looking to get into a class classroom format like you know you go take your turn and then someone else goes and then they do their work and you watch and then someone else goes you work less than if you work one-on-one -on -one with someone if you work one-on-one -on -one with someone you work all the time through the entire class it's just you right and some people thrive in that environment personally that's what I would do if I was wanting to learn to act I would go to Rod and I would have him train me and just only me I don't want to I, you know then I would go into class and start learning some of the other techniques now he comes from um, 
Meisner and, and Ivana Chubbuck technique. So he's going to teach you some of those techniques. If you want a class, go to Hood School of Acting. Not hoodie, like a hood, but H-O-U-D-E. H-O-U-D-E. Hood School of Acting has great classes. Actor Sight, uh, Margie Haber, Howard Fine. Like I said, Joseph Perlman, uh, all these other people. Now, let's say you want some other acting coaches that are just fantastic, but they teach group classes. Darren Warren, D-E-R-Y-N. Y. D-E-R-Y. D-E-R-Y-N. Darren Warren is an amazing coach. She has group classes, and you work four times in her class. Not just once, four times. And I love that. You get to work a lot. Um, Julie Ann Lichty, she has a class called Actors in Action, I think it's called. If you type up Julie Ann Lichty, you will find it. And Lichty is spelled L-I-E-C-H-T-Y. It's like L-I-C-H-T-Y. She's a phenomenal, oh my God, she's a phenomenal acting coach. And you will love her because she's smart and funny and kind and loving and a really good actor. Andy Matheny, I'll give it to you. Andy Matheny, she looks like this. Let me see if you can see her. Oh my God, isn't she pretty? Oh, she's so pretty. And she's funny and she's serious. Like this book is her book. I love this book with all my heart and soul. In fact, I gave her a quote on the back of this book that says, this book is extraordinary. It's funny. I didn't expect it to be, but it is. It's comprehensive, and it will catapult your acting career as an actor, your ability as an actor. Get this book. I went through this book when she wrote it, and I was like, how the heck? You came up with so many good exercises for actors to do to learn how to act. You could literally learn how to act by reading this book. It's incredible. There's so many exercises. This is one of the best books on acting I've ever come across in my life. And she just published it this year. And I am, I mean, I'm going to scream from the mountaintops because it's, I've read a million books on acting. Okay. This is one of the best I've ever read. Get it. I highly recommend it. And here's another book I highly recommend from start to stardom. Like this is the whole journey from start to stardom. You're going to get lots of information from me in my YouTube channel, but you can get information from other people too. Kurt Yu has a great YouTube channel. I send people to Kurt Yu's channel at the Acting Career Center all the time. Kurt is a moderator in my Facebook group, Talent Managers for Actors. He and I teach at different showcases and seminars and workshops together. I love that guy. Um, this is a great book. Get this book. Bonnie Gillespie is a great coach. If you guys are looking for another great coach, I'm not the only coach in the world, folks. There's other coaches. Of course, I'm one of the very best on the planet. So you want to stay close to me because I will never, ever steer you wrong. And I'll always tell you the truth. And I will help you probably more than anyone else in the world will. But that doesn't mean you can't have additional coaches. I have numerous coaches I work with. I work with Tony Robbins. I work with, I think, Mind Valley. Uh, I work with like seven or eight coaches. Sarah Michelle, Wendy Lee Branchfield, um, Connie Miranda. I have numerous coaches because I am excellent and I want to continue to become more and more and more excellent. And the only way you grow is if you learn from people who know things that you don't know, right? <laughs> I'm getting a lot of calls. It's 12 midnight. That's when I'm taping this, 12 midnight. And I've got like a whole bunch of emails and phone calls I need to get back to. Wow. Oh, okay, yeah, I do. Okay, so... I am going to go to the next video, but I just want to tell you, yes, you can make it from extra work to speaking roles. Every single person in this business that wants to do speaking roles can do them. So I'm going to go take this call midnight, but I'm still doing business. I love you guys. Smash the subscribe button. Answer, you know, ask me any questions you have down in the video below, underneath. I will answer any questions. I love you guys. I love actors like more than I could possibly even begin to tell you. What you think you know about how much I love you is the, you're scratching the surface.
You don't even have a clue how deep the love I have for you goes. It's true. It's, it's real, friend. Uh, follow me on Instagram if you want to follow my escapades and check out my life and watch me on my boat and see me with my dog and get tips about acting and listen to my podcast. Did you know I have a podcast? I'm on like episode 85. Just type in Wendy Elaine Wright in the Google and you'll find my pod, Wendy Elaine Wright podcast. And that's fun to listen to on the way. You know me. Who knows what's going to come out of my mouth? I never know. <laughs> and if you want to train with me on a regular basis, get my course, Hollywood Winter Circle Academy. I created the most comprehensive powerful course for actors that exists in the world. I'm excited about it. It is the greatest coach, the greatest course. I have almost 4,000 actors taking my class and they come to class three days a week, whenever they can make it in between jobs and auditions, three days a week, they get to train with agents, managers, casting directors, working actors, and me. And we sit down and work with you. Okay. I don't even know what to tell you. Can I finish working before you send me any more pictures? Oh, my gosh. All right, look. She She's going to... This is my dog sitter, and I'm getting ready to go to New York. So I have to talk to her, and she's showing me how she's training her dog and how she's going to train my dog while I'm gone. Okay, I need to get back to her and tell her where my flights are going to be and when she can pick up my dog. So I'll see you later. I love you guys. Mwah.